Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a relatively intriguing study that confirms something super unusual about the distant universe. But before we talk about the study, let's start with the somewhat hypothetical scenario in order to actually understand what all of this is about. So imagine for a second that we had a really, really large and a really powerful telescope, way more powerful and way larger than the James Webb. And so imagine we had a telescope that's able to zoom in on really far away distances and easily observe various galaxies or even what happens in them at essentially the edge of the universe. And so for example, instead of just seeing one bright object, like a typical quasar that you see right here, it would suddenly start revealing these beautiful galaxies interacting, colliding, and even showing us star motion or even planetary motion in a lot of these super faraway objects. Objects at distances of billions of light years or essentially when the universe was only a few hundred million years old. And so the question here is, what exactly would we see from right here on planet Earth in the modern universe? Well, the first obvious answer is, of course, the redshift effect. Because of the unusual property that we refer to as dark energy that seems to cause the universe to expand and even accelerate its expansion, a lot of these distant galaxies and a lot of these distant objects would be extremely redshifted. For example, even though the galaxy might be somewhat bluish in color in modern universe, it would appear much redder with some visible light actually only visible in infrared spectrum because of the redshift of optical light. And that's of course something that we actually use for measurement of different distances and is something that's basically a fact or has been a fact for a few decades. And that's of course something that you might already know. But what many of us forget is that this is just one of the effects that Einstein proposed when he talked about the idea of redshift and blue shift. And specifically when it comes to dilation, which is exactly what this is, there's also the idea of time dilation, which means that, at least in theory, these distant galaxies should not just appear redshifted, they should also appear moving in slow motion, much slower than anything around us. And that's essentially what this recent study is about. It actually physically confirms that this is indeed what seems to happen with a lot of very distant quasars, or a lot of very distant galaxies. They do seem to be moving in slow motion from our perspective here on planet Earth and in some cases, in very slow motion. And so let's actually discuss a little bit more about all of this, and I guess also let's find out why this is so, how the scientists discovered this. And so first of all, the idea of time dilation is of course one of the predictions of Einstein's theories. And so here, if you start moving faster and faster across the universe, at some point, various frames of reference will start measuring time differently, with time moving a little bit slower for an object that's in motion compared to another object. Here's actually a really good example of something orbiting around something else. And we know that this is exactly what happens to various satellites orbiting the planet, which is why a lot of GPS satellites have to take dilation into consideration, otherwise they would become inaccurate over time. But for satellites, this is usually a very minuscule change. It's basically in nanoseconds per day. But for objects moving across the galaxy or across the universe, this does become quite prominent. And so even though some stars in the galaxy do move at thousands of kilometers per second, producing some dilation effects, once we start reaching the outskirts of the observable universe, the dilation effects technically should become extremely prominent, because here, due to the expansion, and due to the redshift observed, the velocities are extremely close to the speed of light. And some of these time dilation effects have been actually demonstrated by studying distant supernova. It just so happens that the more far away a supernova is from planet Earth, the longer it seems to last. And though it's possible for one or two supernova, statistically there does seem to be a correlation between the distance of supernova, the amount of redshift experienced by the supernova, and the total length of time. But even though theoretically it made sense, physically there was just maybe not enough evidence just yet. Nevertheless, this idea of redshift-dependent time dilation has always been super intriguing. Especially because by proving this, we're basically once again proving Einstein's general theory of relativity and some of its fundamental predictions in regards to distant universe. But obviously looking so far back in time has always been a bit of a challenge, although it has become less challenging because of new telescopes. For example, in just the last couple of years, the scientists have actually discovered quite a lot of different quasars, with more and more discovered by the James Webb. As a matter of fact, in just the last few months, it's identified several new quasars when the universe was only 800 million years old. And some of these objects are very powerful and very, very massive. 
Here we're talking about black holes that are possibly 200 million solar masses in mass, with the biggest one being about 1.4 billion. But intriguingly, the relationship between the black hole mass and the galactic mass seems to be consistent no matter where you look. And so basically, the more massive the black hole in the center, the more likely you're going to have a more massive galaxy. Although obviously the only reason we can even see these objects is because of all of this material that creates huge amounts of friction around the black hole, heating up the material to millions of degrees and creating some of the brightest objects in the entire universe. But once again, the intriguing question here would be, do these accretion disks spin in slow motion as predicted by Einstein's theories? Is there actually some kind of a time dilation that could be maybe discovered if we looked at enough of these quasars? And is this something that's physical and observable, or something that we might never be able to prove? So unfortunately, we obviously cannot see the physical details of these black holes and the accretion disks, and we're not going to have telescopes capable of doing so, well actually possibly ever. It will be an extremely difficult task. But we could use statistics and observations from various quasars to see what's actually happening here. So for example, things like brightness, which is a property that all quasars are going to possess, can be then used to track time. And by observing quasars over time, in different locations across the universe, it then becomes possible to see various correlations. And so here, by using 190 different quasars discovered in the last two decades, going back in time approximately 12 billion years, when the universe was just over a billion years old, the researchers were able to see definitive patterns. Specifically, the emissions coming from these quasars appear to be slowed down by as much as five times, basically moving in like 5x slow motion. Now, they obviously did not see things spinning or things moving around, but they were able to observe the amount of activity and changes in various quasars that usually change their brightness. And it just so happens that the farther away the quasar, the longer various events seem to last, with variability of quasars increasing the farther away they are. And though it's possible there might be some other explanation to all of this, and maybe the quasars were just doing things much slower back then, in reality, because all of this seems to directly connect to the Einstein's theories, and more importantly is also directly related to the redshift of these quasars, at the moment this does seem to be the best evidence we have so far. Basically confirming that things do move much slower in time if you look at it from our time frame, with things moving in slow motion, as if they were actually moving at these very high velocities. But here it's, I guess, also important to add that this is from our time frame. This is all based on individual time frames and is not an objective reality at all. As a matter of fact, there is no objective reality and it's always about these relative spaces and relative times that we always have to consider when thinking in cosmic terms. And so technically, even looking at the Milky Way galaxy from the top here is kind of misleading because this galaxy is approximately 100,000 light years across. And so whatever happens on the right side of the galaxy is not going to be witnessed by the left side for at least 100,000 years. And so for our human brains, with our human experiences, this is not a very easy concept to understand. More so when it comes to the entire universe and objects that are like 12 billion light years away from us. Nevertheless, the evidence seems to be there, and it does suggest that, once again, Einstein was correct, and the distant galaxies that are redshifted are also, technically, moving in slow motion, or the time there seems to flow much slower. But the obvious question that I cannot answer right now, or I guess nobody can, is if it has any physical effects on the universe right here. Does this time dilation in any way affect the modern reality? I mean, it probably doesn't, but I guess we'll find out in time in some of the future videos. And so until then, check out similar videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.